From the day I started to get a hang of Excel at my first job post university, it took me three and a half years to land my current role at one of the largest IT consultancies in Europe as a data consultant. And while it would seem adequate, knowing what I know now, I could have done this much quicker. So without the wasted time and some money on courses that either provide no help at all or do provide help, but just not help for data analysis. And even more of a, <laughs> the massive cost of a university degree. And so that's the point of this video, providing the fastest way to learn data analysis and actually get a job. So going from zero to employable. And of course I provide some hints, tricks, and mistakes that at all costs need to be avoided. So of course, where do you start? Start with the tools to adequately do data analysis. There are many tools a data analyst can use, but only a couple that need to holistically be used to meet the needs of a data analyst. So where do you start? First, start with Excel. No matter how technologically advanced the company is, Excel will always be useful to know as even if it's in a small fashion, Excel will always be used to store some amount of data. This is why I've been able to use it to manipulate, analyze and visualize data will always hold some merit. But despite it being able to complete an entire data project, it still has key limitations. One of those key limitations being its inability to store large amounts of data. And when trying leads to errors like this, or warnings like this, like this, leaving you wanted to break your sleep. This is where the next tool comes to play, SQL or SQL. There's always a divide of data analysis, but you'll get used to this. Allows data analysts to retrieve data found in relational databases through queries. Relational databases being used to store large amounts of data. So with this, you alleviate the problem found with Excel, but there's still other limitations it has. You see, while it's able to visualize data, as I previously mentioned, the visuals just aren't that appealing. The dashboards that you're able to create are very limited in its ability to be interactive. So of course it's not beneficial for users. So this is where another tool needs to come into play, a BI tool. And this is where another divide occurs. You see, there's many different BI tools you can use, but there's only two that really stand out because of their market dominance being Power BI and Tableau. Personally, I went with Power BI. This kind of happened by default, but I'm happy I went with Power BI. This is because many of the features found within Power BI, like Power Query, can also be found in Excel. So it helps streamline learning because the features are found in both tools. Learning one means you learn the other. And of course, this is the fastest way to learn. Tableau is also a viable option, but of course, clearly, I've got some sort of bias. And now, what does the BI tool do? Essentially, this is a nice way to create dashboards, reports, visuals to represent your analysis done. The final tool, or more specifically, language you should learn is Python. And this also comes with its own, let's call it final data analyst divide that being Python versus R. But there's no bias here, but as I said, learn Python. This is more so because of this easy to read syntax, making it easier to start and learn. And of course, because going further than data analysis can help you get into web development, app development, so on and so forth. But be weary there, because that's actually where one of the mistakes I wanna mention starts. But more on that later. Python for data analysis using relevant data analysis libraries can allow you to manipulate, analyze, and visualize data, but also comes with the added benefit of being able to automate tasks within the data analyst workflow. A good example of this is having a folder with many CSV files and you wanna do analysis on all of them. By creating a script that has a loop in it, you can loop through the entire folder structure to of course get analysis on each file which is quite handy, quite neat, instead of doing it one by one. Also, you can go one level higher than this and use Python to do more advanced levels of data analysis. So stuff like time series forecasting. 
So you've got the tools, but how or even where do you learn them? You see, it's very easy to go onto YouTube and type in data tutorials. Maybe you wanted to learn aggregate functions in SQL. You get one video, you watch it, you like it. The algorithm sends you another one. You watch it, you like it. The algorithm sends you another one. You watch it, you like it. You see, the algorithm is trying to keep on the platform and exceeding in doing it. And while it might seem like it's good because you're learning things, you're not actually learning as much as you could be. And the mistake is you are getting stuck in tutorial hell. You see, the best way to learn for most people is to apply what you are learning. So in this instance, it's taking that tutorial information and then applying it to your personal code, applying it to a challenge, a task that you are working on. Instead of just taking that information, not using it for anything and feeling like you're learning and actually not leveling up. You see, in that instance where YouTube was trying to keep you on the platform, it sent you one video, you wanted to only be on the platform for 20 minutes, you spent five hours on the platform. Now imagine that happening for six months where you actually haven't spent much time coding, much time writing formulas, much time creating visualizations. Don't let that be your mistake. And that's why my recommendations in the first instance when learning will not be YouTube related because despite all the benefits and how much I've learned using YouTube, I would recommend staying away from it while learning and then coming back to it when you're starting to build projects, portfolio, etc. So everything I mentioned will be in the description and for the most part, will be free. Yeah, I got you. So to learn Excel, there's a website called Excel Practice Online, which is by far the best with practicing Excel. This is because they provide great insight on tools and functions within Excel and also provide you with a spreadsheet environment to actually get that work in, that practice. They also provide links to additional data sets which can be used for practice alongside being used for Python and Power BI practice, which is good too. For SQL, I recommend using Code Academy as their courses are easy to follow, succinct and provide guidance and hints where needed. For Power BI, I would actually go back to the source, that being Microsoft, and go to their Microsoft Learn for Power BI. I'll do this coupled with getting individual data sets to work on, to practice, to create visualizations, which one of the places I'd recommend to get data sets from is Kaggle. And speaking of Kaggle, this is actually where I would recommend to learn Python. But here, I need to be specific because this is where the second mistake actually occurs, being learning too much. I started to allude to this earlier, but specifically speaking about Python and everything the language has to offer, with the goal in mind to learn and become a data analyst, as interesting as it may seem, it's actually not worthwhile in the first instance learning everything the language has to offer. It's simply because it can be overwhelming it's very easy to try to learn everything and fall into a rabbit hole. This being a blocker on achieving the minimum needed to move forward and become a holistic data analyst. It's much better to learn the basics the language has to offer, the relevant data science libraries needed to do manipulation, analysis and visualization of your data. And then once that's all done and dusted, go back to the additional libraries, additional parts of Python you want to learn. Alternative to the free of charge places that I mentioned, remember I've got you, you can also do the Google Data Analytics Certificates, which I've actually reviewed previously on my channel. Link in the description if you want to see that. But just be aware that they do use Tableau and teach Tableau instead of Power BI and they teach R instead of Python. Okay, maybe there's a little bit of bias, but for the most important part, getting a job. This is actually where I'd recommend using YouTube. See, you start building out your projects to fit into your personal portfolio. How do you do that? Sometimes you can get guidance from the internet, so just forums of what people have done previously, Maybe go into people's channels and finding out projects they've made, guidance on projects, even trying to understand how to do niche or specific things. So maybe web scraping for the sake of this conversation. You can also get this type of guidance from 
ChatGPT, Stack Overflow. This guidance also transcends past just creating your personal portfolio, but also goes into how to obtain industry recognized and employer desired data analyst certifications. One I personally obtained being the Microsoft certified Power BI Associate, which if you wanted to know how the benefits of and to make this easy to do for yourself, then I've got a video where I've explained this, went over, of course, some hints, tips, tricks. So link in the description. At this point, you can now update your CV with all the skills you've obtained, so the relevant libraries you can use, Python libraries, all the things you can do with SQL, Excel, etc. Also including a link to your personal portfolio and then doing the same with LinkedIn. So adding a link to your personal portfolio, but also including the certifications that you have. And with using LinkedIn as well, you can use this to stay up to date with the world of data. So everything that's going on. Why this is relevant is because this type of information can set you apart of other candidates when it comes to interviews. So just dropping a little hint, a little fact, you know, what's going on in the world, how this links to what work you're doing in your personal time. And speaking about interviews as well, you can use ChatGPT to make your interviews easier. So asking it to create model questions for you queried at these different employers you giving it an answer and telling it to rank on how good you answer that question and then regarding the technical part of interviews a lot of the time is sql so using websites like HackerRank and leak code can allow you to stay on point and be able to flex your sql skills and then when it's sometimes a of course, normal technical question where you need to give a word reply using ChatGPT to also create a model answer once again. It's funny I mentioned ChatGPT because AI is actually an honorable mention of a tool that can be learnt and utilized as a data analyst. Now, while I don't think you would be interviewed on being able to use this, it definitely does have benefits and in the near future, yeah, the near future might be a stretch, but in the future it would definitely be more ingrained in the data analyst role. So I don't use this enough to give insight on it, but there's a channel, a great channel that talks about data for all things AI, ChatGPT specifically, and data analytics, which is Luke Barus. So go check him out for that stuff. Really the video should end here, but then I would leave you without utilizing or implementing the rule of three. The rule of three being applied to the mistakes, because I only gave you two. The third mistake being starting but not finishing. You see, I hope you've clicked this video because you have maybe some interest into getting into data analytics. Maybe you're not sure, but this video is gonna push you over the edge to say, yes, I'm getting in. So then you use the resources that I've mentioned that will be in the description. Start getting in the work, learn, start applying for jobs. Sometimes getting rejections because that's just life use those rejections get feedback if possible use that feedback to improve get better do it all over again finally get that job offer as this year your change will be televised oh you're still here <laughs> you clearly like youtube okay while you're here do me a favor please like the video comment about what you liked maybe what you didn't actually like and also, while you're at it, have a look at this video here around everything I wish I knew before I became a data analyst. And of course, until next time, stay blessed, take care and peace.